This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, Deb Wolf, your host. And today we have something special for you, a service dog interview. That's right. You may have read in the newspaper or heard about long, long waits and people doing without. And there was something in the Toronto news that I'll talk about in a little in a little while that was disastrous. But people really need these service dogs and there aren't enough to go around. And I recently met a few people who are trying to change that. So Service Dogs Unleashed is the company we're profiling today. And with me today is Jen Corcho and Sharon Cole. Welcome to the show, Sharon and Jen. Thank Hi. You. Thanks for having us. Well, I met Thanks you with a couple. Well. Oh, yeah. Well, I met you both at the same time with a couple of lovely, lovely dogs. And maybe we can start by just I know you both like to talk about your dogs. So let's start there. What kind of service dogs did I meet? And and tell me what those beautiful dogs were up to. So our service dogs actually um, help us with medical needs as well as stability, as well as other things like with the medical alert, we're looking for seizures, alert PTSD, which is your post-traumatic stress disorder as Mm -hmm. well as other psychiatric needs that a client would require. So my dog is actually medical as well as stability. Okay. So when I met you, you were walking with two crutches. So how does the dog work with the devices you're using? I mean, I, I I know that not every dog can handle that. Right. So for myself, I use a hands-free lead. So I put the lead around my waist. So I don't actually have to use the lead in hand. But I also use a wheelchair as well for my mobility. So the dog has to be able to navigate that, not be afraid of it, get out of the way, and definitely not pull down a person who's walking with crutches or dart Correct. away from someone who's in a wheelchair. So it takes a pretty special dog. Now, when I met you both, Sharon and Jen, you came in with the most ad- adorable blonde golden retrievers only they weren't quite golden retrievers so maybe you want to explain that a little bit yeah so we have a line of dogs that we call sport retrievers and mini sport retrievers they're usually a mix of cocker spaniel and golden retrievers okay so now people are listening going what cocker spaniels and golden retrievers so why those two what's going on why why would you i mean i kind of know but but most people don't think of a cocker spaniel as a working dog even though if you ever throw a ball for one you sure will find that dog will bring it back and bring it back and bring it back it's a working dog but um right how does why a cocker spaniel of all the dogs on the earth why them cocker spaniels are known to be super intelligent Whereas, like, if you were to go with, like, a Papillon, they would be too yappy in right. that regard because they talk a lot. For a Cocker Spaniel, they're a working dog because they're originally bred for gun dog, which means that they were for hunting small game like rats, other rodents, rabbits, and including birds. Well, yeah. And also, like, when I think of Cockers, there's something in going small that makes them less intimidating, right? Yeah, and also they live a lot longer. Oh, I see. So you're taking a golden retriever, lovey, lovey dog, and you're breeding it with something that wants to work and lives long and doesn't scare anybody. So that's a a smart move. (laughs) I mean, yes, yes, Jen? Typically, the average lifespan of a purebred golden retriever is 14 years. Right. Okay. So if you're by, lucky. If you're lucky. So typically that's why we like to breed our dogs with another dog and make a hybrid. So that way the longevity of the dog is there. Now that's a kind of a double whammy because not only are you getting what some would declare as hybrid vigor, whenever you take two breeds that aren't the same, you're less likely to get the genetic problems that have arisen by breeding over the years. So there's the one plus, and then you're breeding to a small dog and usually small dogs live longer than big dogs. So you got double going for you there. Now, 
I know that it takes a long time to train a service dog. So you definitely don't want a Great Dane to be a service dog because he only grows up at two or three. And by the time he gets to six or seven, he's in his geriatric years. So you wouldn't get a lot of work out of him. How long does it take to train these dogs, Jen? It takes about two whole years to fully train a service dog. Yeah. Two full years. Okay. Like, and so, like Sharon said, it takes two full years to train a service dog and about $35,000 to train one dog. Wow. And the wait list, what are we looking at? If I were to say I had an autistic child and I wanted a dog to help her or him, how long would I have to wait and how much would it cost me right now? Okay. So typically, typically speaking, wait lists can be anywhere from two to five years. And as far as cost to a client, there is no cost because all the agencies are nonprofit. So everything does come out of our own pocket. We actually have to rely on sponsors to help us with food costs and any other charitable donations that they would like to give us. Sharon, you want to touch base on that as well? You know what, Sharon? I'd love you to, to spell out what do you need? What do you need? Because this is the time to tell everybody. If you're out there and you're thinking, you know what, I'd like to help these people get more service dogs for more people. What's on your wish list? We need more donors and we need volunteers as well as and fosters. sponsors. And fosters. And fosters. Okay, so tell me uh, what's involved in a foster. Well, the fosters will be able to take care of the dog temporarily while being trained as a guide or an autistic aid dog. As well as and they will be able to stay with the foster. And then the foster will be working with the handler as well as the dog trainer to train the dog. Okay. So you're looking for people who've had a dog before, I'm guessing, and yeah. are soft, I would say. You don't want people yeah. who want to be big on correction. I know sometimes people think service dogs must be precision trained, so that means harsh. Harsh is not precision, right? You no, want a dog who dog. you want a dog who's not afraid of anyone. And that's really important that it isn't treated harshly, right? And, and that's why we do temperament testing right through from the time they're about six weeks old all the way through till they go for their provincial access testing. Okay. Okay. So I want to go to a little commercial break and we're going to come back because this is my favorite part. I love the puppy testing. So we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some of the tests you do on these puppies. So if you're at home and you have your dog at home or puppy and you think to yourself, I wonder if he could be a service dog. Well, you could do this little test on him when we get back after the break. And if he passes, Maybe you want to see about joining a hospital visit program and getting him trained up to do that because, you know, part-time service is nice too. And it's really, really rewarding for everyone. But we're going to talk about how to test your dog coming up next on Animal Party with Pet Life Radio. My guests are from Service Dogs Unleashed, and they're trying to help with this really long wait so more people get service dogs quicker. All right, everybody, stay tuned to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. We'll be back. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all-natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, Deb Wolf. If you want to get a look at some of the dogs who come to my boarding kennel, Camp Good Dog, you can do so on Facebook, Camp Good Dog. You can also check out Deborah Wolf on uh, Facebook on Pet Expert. Deborah Wolf Pet Expert on Facebook. That's my expert page. And there I go beyond dogs. I go into all kinds of animals. My whole animal world is up there. But right now we're talking to Service Dogs Unleashed and there's a bit of a tie-in here because I was looking at Facebook and I saw one of my puppies on their website and I'm proud of that. So 
Gunner, the little golden retriever, tested through the roof. And what does that mean for Gunner, Jen? Gunner is going to be having a very, very unique job. So he isn't just a medical alert and stability dog. He is actually also being trained as a guide dog because my vision is going, so I'm visually impaired, as well as he's being trained as a deaf dog. As I just found out, I am actually legally deaf. Oh, my goodness. So, Gunner... I'll tell you all, if you want to look at Gunner, go to Service Dogs Unleashed on their website and you can see Gunner. Gunner was born September 18th and his mother's a golden retriever. His father's a golden retriever. Gunner's a golden retriever. He's beautiful and loving. And what makes Gunner, Sharon or Jen, whichever of you wants to answer this, what made Gunner the dog you wanted? Like, what was it that made him exceptional? I think partly because of doing, we came, as you know, to your place and did an assessment, a temperament assessment on all the dogs. Right. And when he says all looking, the dogs, right? when she says all the dogs, she means, uh, let's see, was it six standard poodle puppies, four golden retriever puppies, two adolescent labradoodles. Is that it? And a couple of adult exactly. dogs. It's like a partridge yes. in a pear tree. Yes. We tested a lot <laughs> of dogs. <laughs> yes. And so during that temperament testing, he actually took to me right away. So when we, as you know, when you, I did the drop test with him, no, I didn't actually drop the dog people. <laughs> <laughs> a drop test is where I'll take like my forearm crutches or I'll take a wheelchair and I'll knock it over to create a loud noise for the dog to see if they actually get spooked. And right. he did not flinch. He did not budge. He did not move. In fact, he went straight for the forearm crutches and was trying to figure out how to pick them up. For me, nice. that, is, that is key. That is a star quality that I look for in all dogs. Now You got to picture um, this, everybody. I mean, the puppy's tiny. He's got this little teeny tiny mouth, can barely pick up a full tennis ball. And he's trying to lift these giant, heavy metallic crutches that just came crashing to the ground. And, you know, other dogs would be running or peeing themselves or at least right. looking startled. And he was like, hmm, how do I pick this up for her? You know, it was yeah. really quite remarkable from a puppy the size of a pair of oh, shoes. It, it was it was beautiful. <laughs> and part of the reason why I named him Gunner is because his attitude and mentality was so gung-ho that he wanted to work right away. So that's how I came up with the name Gunner. Nice. Okay. So as well as let's after go through we were this done the assessment bit. with that too. After we were done the assessment with him, he just gunned right towards the door to go play with his mate outside. <laughs> and that was the other reason. He took off like a, a bullet out of a gun, you know? Right. Uh, well, he was kind of um, a strange situation in that he was the only boy in his litter, which is rare. So he was just a little bit bigger, just a little bit tougher than the girls. And yet he wasn't a bully at all, which is also Whoa. unusual when you're the only boy and just a little bit bigger and tougher. But he um, so. OK, so we outlined that a little bit. One of the and things you did is you you take an object the puppy doesn't know that's loud and you drop it. And you see, mm -hmm. if he does startle a bit, that's okay too, though, it, right? They don't it, have to be completely yeah. oblivious to the object, or they don't have to fetch no. it. What's a pass? Like, what would count as a pass? If someone's testing their dog at home, and they take something loud, mm -hmm. like a cane or a crutch or just a pot, and they just let it drop on the right. ground, making a really loud noise, what would be a fail, and what would be a pass? Okay, well, prime example would be my other dog that I had. His name is Dakota, and he is afraid of practically everything, like crutches, wheelchairs, shopping carts, and so forth. So we can't have that. We're, we're actually still working with him okay. to, to make him better. Now, obviously, he is getting better. I've been doing a lot of work with him, and he's actually improving with tasks. He's being closer to wheelchairs now. And when I put but a my, dog like my, him is going to take so much more work. So if people are testing their dogs at home, if your dog, right. if you make this loud noise <laughs> test and your dog runs from it or cowers from it or is scared of it, he's probably not a candidate for visiting the hospital because that's the kind of thing that happens at the hospital. Well, no, Stuff no, 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 not, not no? true. They can, not still, true? Be okay. they can yeah. still be candidates for hospital. 
Okay. But their role in the hospital would be different as such as they can do deep pressure therapy, which is DPT. Okay. And that's a, what most people want in a hospital, like especially in the geriatric ward or pediatric ward. They're actually finding in studies that people with brain injuries are actually recovering quicker from having a therapy dog. Okay, so DP, that's touch? Is that when the dog actually climbs onto the person and leans his weight against them? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Exactly. Okay. And that helps therapy, people with brain injuries? Yes. They've actually been doing studies with it. In the American Medical Journal, there's been some major improvements with that. Now, a therapy dog also can go to many different people. It's not just to one person. Actually, it's kind of funny we're doing the radio show today on pets because actually we have a client here who has one of our service dogs and their dog is actually for seizure alert and stability. Okay, so that's and really interesting. I had a standard poodle a year ago born that went, it was here for a long time. She was here for a long time because she was supposed to go to a special needs person. And then that patient got taken into care. So the dog was no longer needed. So she came back. And because she'd been partially trained, I kept it up and taught her to touch and do all these things. Then she went to Vancouver Island and she's now working for a child. This little poodle, 50 pounds standard poodle is now detecting seizures for this little girl so the girl can go to school without her mom can go to normal school without her mom she can have friends but for me like how does that even happen how do you teach a dog to detect it's actually seizures? super easy really? it's super easy yeah the dogs actually can usually detect or smell it before they happen because as you know dogs were originally used to detect breast cancer I didn't know that, actually. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I know cancer's supposed to smell sweet, but I, I don't think humans can smell it necessarily. No, no. And, and a lot of the tests that doctors do in the medical field to test for cancer sometimes don't show, but actually they're finding that these dogs can actually detect and smell cancer, diabetes, seizures. They just know. But they don't know that's what we want. That's like when I train a dog to find the car. It's a big aha moment when he figures out that that's what I've been looking for. Because he knew where it was. It, yeah. He just didn't know yeah. that's what I was looking for. So how, okay, yeah. so you, I guess you put the dog in the room with someone seizuring and reward him for alerting you. And you just do this that's over and correct. over. Or, and then he starts to predict correct. it earlier and earlier. Oh, oh, I could see that. I could totally see almost all my dogs would do that, especially my poodles, because they're very intuitive yeah. and connected. Interesting. Yes. And that's why we have a probationary period when we put one of our dogs with a new handler, because not always are they going to be a, a proper fit. And while we're training the handler with the service dog, we are seeing how the bond is between handler and service dog. Okay, now, Jen. Well, we have to go to a break. We're going to come back right after, and we're going to talk a little more. I'd like you to think about one more test they can do at home, listeners can do at home with their dogs, to see if they might be good for service. And we'll come back and give them that after the break. And maybe we'll hear a little bit from Sharon too when we come back. Stay tuned everybody to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. And we're talking to Service Dogs Unleashed. If you want to see some beautiful, adorable dogs who work and help people who really need it, check out Service Dogs Unleashed. All right, everyone, stay tuned to Animal Party Pet Life Radio back after the break. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet 
Hello, you're listening to Animal Party Pet Life Radio. When Jen and Sharon and their service dogs walk down the street, it's like an entourage. It's like rock stars. People come out of the woodwork to smile at them and nod at them and look at these beautiful goldens, small goldens, with their uh, jackets on. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing, really. So if you want to get involved, please check it out. There's all kinds of ways to help. And also, if you're looking for a dog for someone, if you're looking for a service dog, they are making it extremely affordable and they are helping to get those wait times down. So you might want to contact them about that as well. All right. So Jen and Sharon, Give me another test, please, for people at home. What else can they do to make sure they're not bringing a dog who'd rather not be there into the hospital, that they're picking the right dog for this? So first of all, I would suggest that they put their finger in the puppy's mouth. And if the puppy bites down, that puppy is not a great candidate. And then the second thing that they can do is they can make the dog work for food. So if the dog is eager and willing to work for like say a treat or just a piece of kibble, then that would be the best candidate right. for but, the temperament. But also too, we look for dogs that will also just rather be heavily praised with hands on praise, like petting and mm-hmm. saying, good job. This is what we want you to do. Because sometimes even a dog without a high food drive is a good dog for service. Don't discount that. They will always you know, I'm glad you're dog. saying that because some of it is breed. Standard poodles really don't give yeah. a hoot about food, but they so love it when you tell them how good they are. You know, whereas my lab, he'll do anything for food, anything, 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 anything. Yeah. And some dogs will work for something else like a ball. You see that a lot with the detection dogs mm-hmm. at the border. Right. They're high energy sporting dogs. They'll work for fetch. They'll do anything. They'll even find drugs. If you promise, you'll give them the ball if they succeed. <laughs> so it's, you know, as long as they're hard work. Working is what you're saying, I think. That's right. And okay. also you want to make sure the dog doesn't have a high prey drive because dogs right. that have a high prey drive tend to kill birds and cats and go after children sometimes. And that's the kind of aggression we don't want in a service dog. We do not want any aggression in the dog whatsoever. If there's any sign of aggression, you can usually spot it right away. And mm. that will not be a service dog. Okay, so $35,000 sounds like a lot of money. I don't know how you're able to do this. You must be able to get the price down somehow. $35,000 for every single dog in two years? That just is so costly. My goodness. How are are you managing? We're actually, we're doing an ongoing bottle drive right now. So if anybody has any bottles that they would like to donate, bring them down. Okay, so Um, now now Sharon's talking about the Lower Mainland, Greater Vancouver area. This show is broadcast worldwide. The station is in Florida, so it's got a huge, heavy American audience. But also, there are some Vancouverites listening. So if you're in the GVRD, if you're in the Vancouver area or the suburbs of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, they're looking for bottles. If you're not, then go to their, should it be Facebook? Is that where they should find you? Yeah, Facebook at Service Dogs Unleashed. Okay. We also have Instagram, which is Service underscore dogs underscore unleashed at Instagram, as well as they can drop us a line at service dogs unleashed at gmail.com. I know there's a lot of listeners out there that don't know who's who here. So well, in you're a nutshell, Jen. We've been talking to Jen and Jen has yeah. described Gunner. And we were talking a little bit to Sharon on the side there. Um, but I would like to know, like, what's your involvement in the company? Okay. So I am actually a behavioral specialist for the canines and co-founder, but just more recently, I've just become chief executive of the board. Okay. And Sharon, what's your role? Are you training dogs? Yes, I am a professional dog trainer and I have been the founder of Service Dogs Unleashed since 2016. And I actually am going all over the place, everywhere and anywhere. Really? So, the nice thing about so that, if somebody yeah. far away is looking for a service dog and just can't get past those wait lists, they should contact you anyway, even if they're far away is what you're saying. Yep. We can even do that on Facebook. We are mobile. So for the do people you that are in dogs? the greater Vancouver, do what's you ship that? dogs? Do you ship dogs? Do we ship dogs? Yes. We typically don't. But we would have the new prospective client come to 
us and take you know what and i think that's important i think it's important to highlight this because lately i've been hearing you know because my poodles last year the litter of nine three of them tested well for service and now this year four goldens and two poodles and one labradoodle tested well for service i'm kind of getting a lot of attention from people who want service dogs as well as people who are interested in them and providing them and and yourself but i have had these stories come to me where they buy a dog from me or they ask for a dog from me and they tell me we we already spent $15,000 on a dog who never arrived. We already did this, that, and the other. And there are a lot of scam artists out there. Recently right. in Toronto, my sister, who's a high school teacher, had a, a lovely student who was waiting and waiting and waiting for a dog, a service dog from California. They paid 15 grand for this dog. When the dog came, the dog wasn't even house trained. It was aggressive. It wasn't a service dog at all. And um, yeah. the, the end of the story is horrible. The young woman actually took her life. And, you know, I just want to highlight for everybody out there, service dogs, you need to be trained with it when you get matched up. So if you're yeah. being approached online or you're trying to buy a puppy for someone who's truly a special needs person who needs help, needs an assistance dog, you need a program that you're going to go with the person the dog's supposed to help and receive some training, dog and handler, dog and patient, if you will. If they're just shipping you a dog that you've never met, this is probably a scam. Now, so be aware yes. of that. And the other way you can also find out if the a company is a scam, you can actually go to the AD Assistance Dog International and talk with Christine because she's the head of ADI and she could tell you what agencies in the States and Canada that are accredited as a service dog agency. Now, there are some companies out there that are not accredited yet, right. but you want to go with an accredited organization that is nonprofit. So everything that the organization does is strictly out of pocket or through sponsorship or donations or fundraising. Now, with that being said, I would like to advise the public that if you're going to go with a non-accredited organization, I would strongly suggest one that doesn't ask you for money. Okay. Because we, as Service Dogs Unleashed, we do not ask for money, right? Well, how do you do From it then? If you have someone come to you, I mean, you must have more people than you have dogs. So how, how do you deal yes. with this? There's um, never going to be, there's never, there's ever never gonna gonna be, be enough, enough yeah. dogs. That's true. Right? And the timeline to get these dogs out, it's always going to be a long time. Always. Right. Every agency that we've talked to, um, their wait list right now is 10-year wait list. But some have even actually closed their doors on applications because they, they're just overwhelmed with how many people are requiring a service dog. When I think of the little girl that I helped on Vancouver Island, I mean, 10 years, she'd be done with school by then. It's not in time. It's just not. No. She'd be an adult no. already. Len homeschool and, and why, or her mother sitting beside her class, yeah. one of the two. We want to open the doors and get people that need these dogs in a timely fashion. We're different from everyone else. Our main goal and mission is to improve the quality of life of those that are in wheelchairs, that are autistic, deaf. We are even right now trying here in Canada to get dogs to the VA, which is Veteran Affairs. Because as oh, you know, that would be good. Yeah, that would be the good. vets suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder to the point that some of them actually take their lives. And yeah. we can't have that. We need to be there for our men and women of service, whether they're VPD, RCMP, fire departments across the country. They need service animals. Oh, I totally agree. You know, there was recently a bunch of situations, and I guess the highlight of them all was the peacock, you know, where people tried to travel and get special permission to take pets because they claimed they had anxiety issues. And someone actually well, tried to get on the plane with a peacock. And so that's well, why I think it's so important that we differentiate between people who truly need these animals and truly working animals and the people who are just trying to get their dog on a free flight. Okay. I have a very good story about that. I was on the SkyTrain not long ago, and I actually seen somebody sneak their pit bull, untrained and not a service dog, 
on the train, like Joyce Collywood, and they got off at West New West, and the transit security was literally right in front of them, and they didn't even see them. Oh, my goodness. But also, too, we have a more recent story that's hilarious as hell. We just had a new client approach us wanting to get a service dog, but if they couldn't get a service dog, they wanted to train their pet rat as oh a goodness. therapy rat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we had to laugh. We're not in the business of training rats. Um, cats Aww. or rats or guinea pigs or gerbils or any other four-legged creature that is not a dog. Dog. It's like a a Larson cartoon, the service cat, you know. But there are service cats, there are anxiety animals, and some animals can do the job besides dogs. But when you're talking about helping someone who can't see or can't walk, you need a four-legged dog. That's what you need. You need that dog. You need a a dog who's stable and big. Not a little teeny tiny rat crawling onto the subway or the bus or the sky train. That's ridiculous. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I mean, my disability, like a lot of people don't notice it, but I had a horrific accident in 2011 where I fell in my home. And as you know, stats show that most accidents action actually happen in the home or close to home. And my accident, unfortunately, took place October 22nd, 2011 in my home. I fell in my home in the bathroom and snapped my neck. I've got a T7, T8, L45 herniated tailbone, displaced pelvic, severed nerves, pinched off bowel, pinched off bladder. And that is why I require a service animal that's able to assist me with many different tasks. Well, you know, we've almost run out of time and I wish we had more time. So I'm going to invite you back. I hope you can come back. We'll book a time if you're willing, because I'd love to talk more. We would love to come back. Oh, it was so good. (laughs) All right. So everybody out there, if you want to check them out, go to Facebook, go to Service Dogs Unleashed, and you can actually see some of these puppies learning things. Gunner has already got house training now and he's grown a lot. He's with me. I'm sort of the foster for now. And uh, he's getting along with some of our guests at the board and kennel camp good dog as well as i've taken him away from his mother because i i thought it was time and so he's now yep. with a couple of poodle puppies yep. most of the time and his sister and, and his well i guess surrogate grandpa i don't know there's a standard poodle yep. called noodle who loves puppies so he's with him and he's just basically learning dog etiquette how to meet and greet how to be nice how to sit how to come how to heal all the basics but always gently, because I know he's already he needs also to be doing psychiatric. <laughs> and he's doing psychiatric already. So I was at Camp Good Dog, what, three weeks ago, and I was doing some work with Gunner. I was going to take him for a walk, but he actually had other ideas where he okay. wanted to do EPT right away. He did Aww. not want to go for a walk. He wanted me to sit down, and he actually climbed to my lap and sat there and applied pressure to me. Wow. Well, you know, you've picked the right puppy. Okay, we've got to go. We've run out of time and today like again, on Animal yes, Party, you. Pet Life Radio, um, Jen and Sharon. Okay, one more thing yes, that we really you. do have to go. Yeah, I was going to say for everyone who's going to our Facebook page at uh, Service Dogs Unleashed, please, please drop a like, write a comment. It doesn't matter. All publicity is good publicity for us. Okay, well, I'll have you back on the show because that's good publicity, too. All right, everybody out there, Animal Party, Pet Life Radio listeners, be good to your animals. Until next time, from me, Deborah Wolf. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.